Hey, I just got this uh, bipolar stepper motor driver board from eBay um, for 20 bucks. It's from China, of course. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool, so I thought I'd do a video on it. <coughs> um, it uses the uh, TB6600HQ chip, which allows for 4 bit micro stepping, um, current limiting, which you operate with this guy here, uh, and uh, up to, uh, I think, uh, 100 kilohertz input clock frequency, which is kind of, you know, crazy. I don't know if you'd ever use that. I don't think you would. <clears throat> but the board itself, which uh, this uh, has all the supporting components, is quite nice, I think. It has the heat sink right here, fairly large heat sink for the, uh, the uh, chip. But uh, the way it's sandwiched together is pretty cool. The board is actually screwed to the chip with some spacers. Um, the board pushes down on the chip. And the wires from the chip actually go through the board and solder on top of it, which uh, I think is a cool idea. Um, some supporting chips around it. This one here is just an inverter, uh, like an inverter buffer. These guys up here, I'm not sure what they do. I couldn't find anything uh, data sheet wise, and the numbers are really, really hard to read and in a weird font. I didn't look this thing up, but it's probably just an optocoupler. Um, can't really see what the reference designator is on it. Uh, it just says uh, U... Yeah, yeah, it just says U5, so the generic uh, IC reference designator. Um, we got some resistors here for current measurement, I believe. It says R680, so that actually might be 680 ohms. If it is, that doesn't make any sense for current measurement. Uh, I'm not really familiar with the surface mount resistor markings. But uh, they're kind of big, and it, may, it would make sense that they are for current measurement. But then again, there's only four output terminals, and there's six of these guys, so maybe not. Or maybe they have them all in parallel. Uh, actually, I think they might have them all in parallel. I guess that's what a multimeter's for. It looks like it. Uh, I'll check that. I'll get my I'll get my multimeter, and I'll we'll take a look at that. Okay, so I just looked up how the markings work, and the R indicates the decimal point, so that would be 0.68 ohms, which makes sense, so it's almost certainly for a, for a current measurement, and they're probably all in parallel or something like that. Um, if I just measure across it with my fluke here, um, I just get like 0.3 ohms. So, but if I go like this, I get 0.3 as well, so I'll just see if these guys are connected together. Yeah, okay, so they're connected together on this side, for sure. On this side, where's my probe? There it is. I'm just doing this off the screen, so it's kind of hard to orient stuff. Yeah, these are connected together as well. And, oh. Sorry about that. And, yeah, these are all connected. So they are all in parallel, at least... These guys are in parallel, these guys are in parallel. Um, so these are probably all the, uh, the current shunts for the B phase, all the current shunts for the A phase. So that makes sense, because it does have current measurement capabilities built into it. Because <coughs> that's what the uh, this pot over here is for. Uh, it lets you uh, vary the current from 0.5 to 4.5 amps. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned the uh, I think I mentioned these terminals, but the, the best thing about these terminals is they actually come with little plugs like this. So you can just wire up your stepper motor, your power source, and all that right up to the terminal blocks, and you can just easily plug them in and unplug them. You can just plug in the stepper motor here, like that. It's really handy. Um, this is a stepper motor I'm using. Let's swing it into view. Uh, it's just one out of a printer, I think. Uh, 1.8 degrees per step. Right there, 5.2 ohms. And for the power supply, I'm using a uh, 32 volt power supply from a printer, um, which, uh, you know, 1.5 amps the output current. So I'm keeping the, uh, the uh, current limit on this guy down to the minimum 0.5 amps, both to keep the uh, motor from overheating and to keep the, uh, the power, uh, it from drawing too much power from the power supply. 
So I'll just zoom out a bit here so you can see the whole setup. <coughs> I'm using uh, my Arduino here to uh, interface with the board. There's three inputs on the uh, the board. Um, the clock input, the enabled input, and the direction input. They wire out the uh, actual input and the ground for each input separately. But um, for most cases, I imagine you'd tie all the grounds together. Because in most cases, we'll be running it from one. All the ins all the inputs will be coming from one device. So, but they, uh, even if you like, I actually measured them with a multimeter, and they actually are separate. So, it's kind of handy, I guess, if you wanted to uh, do the different inputs from a different device for whatever reason. So we'll just plug the inputs in here. On the uh, data sheet for the uh, chip that this thing is using, it mentions that the uh, the enabled input is active high, which makes sense. But uh, since there's an inverter in here, it's actually active low. So you uh, pull the in uh, the enable input to uh, to ground or low in the code for the Arduino. Um, I'm not sure how the direction works. Um, once I stop the camera, I'll look it up. And then the uh, clock input is active high. So that must mean it's active low. I guess it. Active low. I'll have to look that up too. Because if it's actually inverting, and then I'm actually inputting this wrong, and it should be low for the minimum. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Let me go back a little bit. The minimum input pulse length, uh, time length, is uh, 2.2 microseconds. I'm using two, uh, 25 microseconds just uh, for some headway, for some leeway, and uh, just because it's not that critical. Like, I don't need. I'm not inputting such a high frequency that I need to get right down to the minimum, so might as well keep it well above the minimum, just for liability. And the maximum input frequency I think I might have mentioned is 40 kilohertz. Um, no, sorry, 120 maybe. I'll have to look that up. But I know the chopping frequency for the PWM <clears throat> is anywhere from 20 to 60. This one's running at 40. Um, I've already looked at the waveform. I'll show you that in a bit, though. So yeah. So I've sorted out the uh, input high-low business, sorted that all out. Um, according to the data sheet, everything is uh, enabled high, with the uh, direction control being uh, counterclockwise when it's high and clockwise when it's low. But everything is going through this inverting uh, hex buffer, so everything is opposite. So it's actually uh, my code was actually wrong because I had um, uh, the Arduino writing the uh, digital output high for um, uh, for uh, 25 microseconds when it actually should be low for 25 microseconds and then high for the rest of the time so it wasn't running quite white or wasn't running quite right because of that weird you know extended clock because it had a really long uh, pulse and then like a really short time in between so it was kind of messing it up a bit but it runs much better now and uh, it actually will cause the power supply to shut off if I turn this current up even a little bit which uh, makes much more sense because before I could turn it up all the way and it wouldn't it wouldn't cause the uh, power supply to trip even though it should have <clears throat> so I can just plug it in now uh, I'll zoom out so you can see the whole setup there we go Oops. there goes the spoon so I'll just plug in the power supply here so now you can I don't know, you might be able to hear it, but uh, I'll zoom in on the stepper motor, and I have it so it's uh, outputting a pulse every 200 milliseconds, so 5 hertz, which uh, translates to a pretty low speed because this motor is only 1.8 degrees per pulse, so it's getting quite warm even at the minimum amount of current. Ouch. So I'll speed it up so you can see it um, moving a little faster. I'll up it to uh, 1,000 pulses per second. I'm just modifying the code directly. There we go. That's a much faster, more exciting pace. So as you can see, it works pretty well now. Um, a lot better than it was working, just because I was messing up the inputs. When I had the uh, inputs wrong, uh, this might be something you want to watch out for, because when I had the inputs wrong, the motor was a lot weaker than you might expect it to be. Um, but now it's much stronger and it was also missing some pulses, uh, just kind of messing up in general. So it works perfectly now that I have the uh, <laughs> the inputs.
configured correctly. I'll talk a little bit about the micro-stepping uh, capabilities right now. Um, if you don't know, micro-stepping uh, is a way of getting higher precision out of a stepper motor given a certain precision of the stepper motor. So if I was operating in 4-bit micro-stepping mode, which would mean uh, 16 steps instead of 1, then I would actually be getting like 0.2 degrees per step instead of the 1.8. Um, and you would change the micro-stepping modes just with these dip switches down here. This, the one farthest to the right here is actually for fault mode. Uh, it just tells it to do something different on a given fault mode. So we'll put it into the highest. You can adjust between, um, I think it's uh, four different levels. Uh, so this is full wave here. You can do four different levels with this one, uh, eight with this one, and then 16 with both of them on. And if, you, if they're all on, then it puts them into sleep mode, like low power mode. So we'll put them all on like that. And we'll plug the power back in. Zoom out so you can see the motor. So it's still operating at that one kilohertz. And uh, yeah, so it's moving much slower than you'd expect given the amount of pulses you're sticking in. So it's probably moving about 16 times slower. Um, but it's also a lot smoother and a lot more precise. Um, of course, it's not the strongest, it's because of the low current I'm using. So I'll change the, uh, the pulses per second to five. It'll move really slow, but you'll be able to see the kind of precision you can get. Oop, too much zoom. There you go, so it is running now. Um, I can feel it. It's, it's super slow and very, very small movements, but it is going. I might be, you might be able to get. Yeah, you can sort of see it moving there. Okay, I'll I'll up the pulses to 10 per second, just or maybe even 20, because that's just way too slow. Okay, so that's 20 pulses per second. It's still going really slow, but at least you can see it moving now. So as you can see, if you use the micro-stepping capabilities, you can get a lot more precise movements. Um, it's not going to be uh, exactly, you know, divisions of 16 of that step, but it'll be pretty close. Um, so that's kind of handy if you want more precision out of a... Like even a motor like this like can get ridiculous precision, because this is already fairly precise, that 1.8 degrees per step. But with that micro-stepping, it gets pretty ridiculous. So we'll take a look at some waveforms now. Um, <clears throat> due to the way my tripod, my makeshift tripod works, um, you can only look at the screen sideways. So Now naturally this is a uh, bipolar stepper motor, so the windings get energized uh, in different polarities. But um, I'm just going to reference my measurements from ground, so the, uh, the heat sink. But you'll still be able to see what's going on. So I actually have it pulsing slow enough that you can see the uh, the varying pulse width to try so it's doing like a that's the micro stepping because the micro stepping is actually putting a sine a approximation of a sine wave current through the uh, stepper motor and you do this by uh, varying the uh, duty cycle the applied voltage um, you can look up a uh, um, like inverters um, true sine wave uh, duty cycle inverters stuff like that and you'll find um, exactly how that works. I don't know the exact term for this method of doing it. But right now we're at 5 microseconds per division and uh, so this will give us the uh, <clears throat> the period it's using for the switching which is a uh, 40 point some kilohertz. It's uh, flickering around a bit there so let's just stop it. And we can zoom in a little bit. We can actually get see some ringing some inductive ringing, some oscillations up here. Uh, that's to be expected with any kind of inductive circuit, that's especially when it's controlled by electronics and at high frequencies. So if we uh, turn it on again, uh, you can't really see much, uh, sort of. Not sure what that is. That's yeah, I'm not really sure what that is, but um, I'm going to switch it back into the uh, full wave drive mode and not micro-stepping, and then we'll be able to see the uh, actual pulsing 
like the uh, pulsing overlaid onto the uh, duty cycle of the switching frequency. Uh, it's hard to explain, but you'll see what I mean in a second. So I changed the uh, stepper motor driver into uh, full wave mode, and I've lowered the uh, amount of uh, steps per second to two, but I can't really get the effect that I was looking for, probably because I don't remember what effect I was looking for. So instead, I'm going to bump the frequency back up, and uh, instead I'll show you how it varies the uh, duty cycle when you adjust the current output. Um, I won't be able to adjust the current output too much, because otherwise the power supply shuts off, but you'll be able to see something. This is a snapshot of the uh, waveform um, going into the motor. All of them are going into the motor, I forgot to mention that, but this is a snapshot of the uh, waveform going into the motor at the lowest current setting. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it's doing these super variable width pulses, but I think it's just to try to keep the current. Because you'll see there's actually going to be an average current, right, because the inductance smooths at the current. So it's probably just trying to keep that current within the value that you specified with the pot. So I'll increase the current a bit and see if we can see any differences. I can't do it too much though. There, I've increased it a bit, see if we can see any differences. Oh yeah, so we can see uh, quite a few differences there. The pulses are much longer, um, just to get the current higher, which makes sense. Um, if you've done any kind of theory at all, you'll know that any kind of like electronic switching theory for power supplies or whatever in school, you'll know that uh, you can do this. You can do this. Basically, you can just do this. Uh, the applied voltage can be not nice, but the inductor will smooth the current out to a nice looking waveform. That was a pretty terrible way of explaining it, but I more or less got my point across. Anyways, that's the best I can do for that. Um, anyways, that was a little look at a stepper motor driver board and maybe even a little bit of theory about stepper, mo stepper motors. Um, before I wrapped up the video, I thought I'd take a look at this, the uh, current draw from the power supply. Um, this is a uh, this is at 100 uh, pulses a second, so like 30 RPM. Um, I'm going to switch it up to the uh, 1,000 pulses per second to see what the current draw is at that. I'd expect it to be higher, obviously. Okay. Okay, so it's a little higher there. Um, so I'm going to try turning up the uh, current current potenti uh, potentiometer here and see how much it changes by okay so I don't know what happened before because uh, before when I just turned it up I only turned it up a little bit I thought at least and it turned off the power supply so something must have shorted like I had some probes lying around and all that so something must have shorted out or something Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. And uh, maybe I'll do another mo uh, video on stepper motors or something like that another time. But uh, that's it for now. Thanks.